Hey Harvest family, welcome back to our discipleship series, Everyday Discipleship. And in this series, we're doing Bold as Lions with evangelism and witnessing with Sid Jolson. Sid, welcome back. Thank you. Loving having you, loving this time together. And today I wanted to ask Sydney to help explain the difference between the office of an evangelist, the evangelist, and kind of demystify some of what evangelism is and our perceptions of that. And the, the beauty of everyday witnessing that I, it can equip me and say, hey, Rich, you can do this thing. You can get out there. Last week, we spoke about the gift of righteousness. And it's the righteous that are as bold as lions. That leaves us with such confidence. And, and it actually removes the fear of failure. But today, Sid, help us. You're an evangelist. you in the office of evangelist. Help us. What, what is the difference? Well, thanks, Rich. And I, I, just, I just love... The fact that I get to be in the room and, and talk about this. And I think I'd like to start by saying that if I was to be remembered um, with my little dash and then the days that, that come to an end and there's a memorial and they get, people are going to speak about me, mm. I, would, I would rather them not to say, Sydney the evangelist. Yeah. But Sydney, a lover of Christ. Come on. A son. Yeah. That, that's, that's really the essence of who I am and who you are. You're a child of God, a son, a daughter of the Most High God. And, and through being a son, I've come to discover my gift. I've come to discover who I am, my identity in Christ. But I, I realized that I, I have been set apart to be an evangelist. And so Ephesians 4 verse 11, it talks about that some were given to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and they're given for the equipping of the body of Christ so that the body, the church, can go out and do the ministry, the work of the ministry. So it's not left up to the evangelist to get everyone saved. That's not actually his role, even though in his wake, in his path, in his life, many will be touched by the Lord and would come to salvation. But the main part of an evangelistic gift is to equip the body of Christ. And that's one of my passions, mm. is seeing believers activated and set ablaze to realize how simple it is to just be a passionate lover of Christ. Because that's what it's all about. It's about first being loved by Him, and then that love overflows into a dying and broken world that needs that touch. I just think of while I'm talking, a mate of mine who I'm doing just intimate life with and discipling and mentoring him, his name's Martin, and he lives in Plettenberg Bay. And the most amazing thing is he came to Durban for three months, and he was in our church for three months, and he was a nominal Christian. But I got hold of this guy, and I said, come with me. Took him out to places and to spaces that he's never been before, and this activated the fire of God in this guy. His wife has got a completely new person wow. as her husband. He is ministering in shelters now, leading midweek groups. And he was nowhere before this. He's been liberated, transformed, set free. And that's what happens around an evangelist. Mm. People get fired up, yes. they get changed, and they get put on a trajectory to doing, being, and acting like Jesus. And so, an evangelist, I see many different types of evangelist gifts. Yeah. Not all of them are standing on a soapbox and going, turn or burn! In fact, that's actually not what we want to encourage. We want to encourage the love of God, the grace of God message out there. The kindness of God leads us towards repentance. And so, there's many, I don't think you get one evangelist that looks like another yes that there, there's no cookie cut evangelist in fact they're all in different shapes sizes gifts capacities and all the different uniqueness that god has created them to be like and i see guys that are gifted in tent revivals mm. some in stadium crusades street evangelists there's servant-hearted evangelists 
apologetic evangelist. Yes. Ravi Zachariah just passed to be with the Lord. Incredible inspiration, incredible gift to the body of Christ. There's, there's guys that are going out and doing incredible things in different ways. Creative, dramatic evangelists. And God is so just manifold wisdom in the spectrum of how we can reach the lost. Yes. And so there's not a cookie cut in terms of what an evangelist mm. gift looks like. But what we do see in the scriptures is that they are empowering yes. to the body of Christ. And an evangelist like myself, we, we go out and we, we could be church planting. We could lead churches for a short period of time. We could then hand over to the pastor. We could break open hard ground. I would say, what kind of evangelist am I? I'm a hard ground breaking mm. evangelist. God likes to put me in the worst case scenarios and to open up and to clear an atmosphere and to see people empowered, enjoying the life of God and establishing a work of God in an area. And so that's been done and replicated a few times in my life. And so what is the difference evangelism and witnessing? Well, a witness is who you are. It's your identity Mm -hmm. in Christ. In Acts 1 verse 8, the The Holy Spirit comes upon us in power to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So your Jerusalem looks like the city you live in. For us, it's Durban. I'm in the north coast, and then it's the region around, our KwaZulu-Natal. To our nation, South Africa, then to the ends of the earth. Wherever we go, what Mm -hmm. the scripture is saying is that witnessing does not turn on and off. You don't put your witnessing cap on and then you take it off. So you just do a little bit of witnessing on a Saturday morning with the evangelism team yeah. and then you've done your you've you've ticked your witnessing box for sure. the box for the week. Mm-hmm. No, witnessing is a lifestyle. It's who you are. It's who you are in the workplace. It's it's as a colleague, it's as a neighbor. It says a husband or a wife to your spouse. It's the way you father or mother your children. Witnessing is a the all of life. Yeah. It's, it's you all the time, 24-7, mm. 365. So it's witnessing is more about are you an effective witness yeah, or an right. ineffective witness. Mm. And so witnessing is you get to be an intentional witness as an effective witness to think about every day let me let me pray and ask God I think of Matthew 7 verse 7 ask seek and knock Mm. ask and you shall receive seek and you will find knock on the door and it will be open as a witness every day we we need Jesus we we need to spend time with him but how powerful is it when we think beyond our own me myself and I And we, we live thinking, God, what opportunities could you give me today to be a witness, to be an ambassador for Christ Jesus? Because mm-hmm. that's what it is. You are a minister of reconciliation. Right. Wherever you go, it's an opportunity for you to bring someone closer to the Father, the Father's love, to reconcile them to Father God. As Christ has come and he has broken every dividing wall of hostility that is set up against us and God, so we get to be ambassadors with them to come and break down those walls of hostility. Some of them can be condemnation, guilt, and just shame that people are carrying, and you come and extend the Father's love. A gift can open the way for a giver. You can give a gift to people. You can ask questions into their life. You can seek them out. You can knock on the door. You see, I find as a witness that it's not so much that I'm going and telling people about Christ and getting on my little bandwagon and 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 sharing about Jesus and taking opportunities to offend people and just get in their face. That's not really what it's all about. But it's the love of God. Instead, I found questions mm. so powerful. And when we look at Jesus, in the scriptures, he was asked, I think, 180, about 186 questions. And he only gave, theologians say, three answers. (laughs) 
Some say eight. Okay, there was a bad eight. Eight, all right? Some say eight answers. Yeah. But actually, Jesus asked about 307 questions. A lot of people think that Jesus is the answer man, of which he is. He's the solution to all of life. And, yeah. But in fact, a powerful tool that he used is he asked many questions. And so when we go out to be a witness, it's just ask people questions. Lean in and ask intentional questions that just check how shallow that belief system is. Scratches beneath the surface just a little bit to see what actually is underneath. What actually do they believe? And most of the time, it's very thin. And then you get through a question to just get someone to the place of thinking about why they actually believe what they believe. And a question is powerful that the Holy Spirit can lead someone to coming to Jesus Christ. So seek. How do we seek? Well, pray. Praying for people. Prayer is powerful. The, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. We can break open hard ground by praying for people. We've prayed for people as our family and seen so many come to the Lord. There's some people that I'm still praying for, like a teacher that I just love. There was a real evangelistic atheist. But I pray for him still to this day. And I pray that you would get a heart to lift people up and to marinate them in the presence of God and saying, God, come and touch their lives, bring opportunities, come and woo them by the Holy Spirit because the greatest evangelist is the Holy Spirit. He loves using the small little contributions yes. that we make and doing great things through them. Seeking people out is having a wide lens in your life, not just a narrow lens. Sometimes as believers, we, we just get on our bandwagons and we, we on our agenda for the day. We're going to the shop and we've got to get X, Y, and Z. And, and a narrow lens is to just think about what we need to do. But a wide lens, which I believe Jesus had as he went through all those towns in Israel, and he was aware of people. Yeah. He was looking for the cry of people's hearts. He was looking for the opportunities and the needs that people had. And so a wide lens, as we're seeking people out, just going through our normal day, our salt roots, as I call it, yes. where it's off to work we go, then to our hobbies, our sports, that run in the afternoon, that walk in the park, walking your dog, whatever it might look like for you, a creative class with people. Then you're going off to shops, and picking kids up from school, those are all part of your salt roots where God wants you to make a powerful impact. And so in the, you can have a wide lens to say, how can I seek and see someone touch today? Say a word, a word of encouragement. A witness is someone that is filled with hope. Yeah. We have glistening hope mm. because Jesus is our living hope. So if we just speak hope, and life-giving, encouraging words into people, that can be a seed that can be so powerful to bring change. Yeah. And then knock. You see, I've heard it said often, Rich, that preach the gospel, sometimes say words. Mm. Have you ever heard that before? Well, Francis Assisi. But Romans 10 verse 14 says, How will they know yes. if no one preaches to them? Right. And so we need to share about Jesus Christ. We need to share the gospel. The gospel, the power of the gospel, is Jesus' death on the cross, his burial, and his resurrection. That there is the power. We need to tell people it's no good just loving people all the way to hell. We got to love them, and way of loving them is just showing them Christ, living the gospel, living like Jesus, but also to share and tell them about Jesus. For me, Rich, a believer's life should be filled with words. We should preach the word, tell them the word. Works, they should see our good deeds yeah. and wonders. And we'll get to talk about wonders yeah. in the next session. I said that's incredibly powerful. Thank you. And I'm just so reminded about last week into this week. There's many people aren't thinking about the rest of the world because they're still trying to figure themselves out. Yeah. And friends, that's why it's the righteous. Oswald's lines. If we understand who we are, 
that you're starting off with your identity when you have confidence between you and the Father. You have confidence that you and the Holy Spirit are, are, are walking together and you have confidence that He's backing you. That's when we get a wide lens. That's where we get a wide view. And, and I love it. And I'm just reminded as you're speaking, Jesus started His ministry with the Father speaking over Him. This is my Son in whom I love and I'm well pleased. You see, Jesus had His identity. This is my Son whom I love. He was fully accepted. And with him, I am well pleased. That's where he found his approval. Yeah. Acceptance, approval, and his identity were sorted. Therefore, he didn't get validation of what he was doing. He got validation of who he was. Yeah. So friends, you and I are witnesses. And what this is saying to us, we can be effective witnesses or ineffective witnesses. And on the journey, we're going to share some tools on how to be more effective witnesses and Sid's going to share with us what words really work what scriptures help what questions we can ask so friends today that's the end of our session we love you and appreciate you and thank you for listening because you're listening because you want to do something more with your life and uh, we just want to say we we love you we back you that's why we want to do it that's why you know when Sid releases things over us in the coming weeks let me tell you something's going to shift and change within our hearts for us to be effective witnesses I had this all freaked out. It's amazing. Alright, we'll stop flowing sweet. Alright, and take two.